Hello. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about um, something called metamaterials. Uh, so uh, the title is uh, Beyond Materials, Metamaterials. Basically, these are um, artificially engineered materials which possess you know, unusual um, properties and I'm going to go into them later in the talk. So um, it starts with um, Einstein's theory of general relativity. So basically, that's a sort of loose mathematical uh, framework where space and time uh, is distorted by matter. So we've got an example of a uh, gravitational lens there, where the galaxy is uh, distorted by the black hole in the center. <coughs> so lenses go back a long time, uh, from sort of the start of civilization, uh, where they first discovered lenses in 2000 BC. Um, black holes um, also result from a uh, singularity. So this is, this is all relevant because this is the mathematical framework behind transformation optics, which is an offshoot of uh, metamaterials. Uh, so what is transformation optics? Basically, um, I've mentioned astronomy, uh, and you have um, thermal cloaking. Um, so one of the applications is um, cloaking. Um, so you can have thermal cloaks, um, cloaking for sound waves, um, cloaking for matter, where you uh, use the equations to uh, cloak electrons going around uh, a hidden insulating shell. So uh, there's a picture of one there. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a nice uh, program to use, um, finite difference time domain. Uh, you use it in MATLAB to simulate uh, electromagnetic waves. Um, so I've got some equations on the right. Um, uh, so, um, on the left is the uh, the ray, and on the right is the distorted ray. Um, so I can just show a uh, bit of code. So this is a simulation of the cloak. Um, you've got the, an electromagnetic pulse from the left um, uh, cloaking, uh, cloaking takes place there um, in the uh, cylindrical region. So I mean, in, in theory, you know, you could uh, cloak, cloak anything. I mean, um, you've got uh, different methods. You can uh, cloak tanks in, in the infrared. Um, some people have tried to, uh, you know, use um, projectors, projectors on uh, a screen that they're wearing to pro project the uh, image behind them. So basically, uh, you know, invisible to, uh, to human eye. So what gives um, these cloaks their interesting properties? Uh, things called metamaterials. So these are uh, electrical structures, combination, combinations of uh, capacitors and in, uh, inductors. Um, they're usually sort of split rings. Um, 
And here, you know, you've got uh, an example there. Um, Uh, so, I mean, you know, clo cloaking's invisible. I've mentioned some uh, sort of applications and stuff already. Uh, so, I mean, an innovation in the uh, cloaking field, I suppose, um, which, you know, I've done my PhD on and stuff, is uh, to cloak something, you know, underneath... Um, a carpet effectively, it's called like hiding uh, something under a carpet. Uh, so this is uh, possible uh, using an all dielectric uh, implementation. So instead of using anisotropic materials, you would use um, anis uh, isotropic materials made of a, a single uh, block of dielectric. Uh, so this, this technology is basically, I mean, it's got some interesting uh, applications there, but uh, basically it's going to revolutionize, you know, satellite communications. So currently, you know, you've got antenna dishes. Uh, they're sort of uh, parabolic, and uh, you can create sort of flat dishes. Uh, so you're saving space um, and cost and, and things. Um, so I mean, I, I've showed the uh, video. It's something fun to play around. I mean, you need MATLAB to, to run the codes. Um, another interesting feature is uh, negative refraction. So to, conventionally in a lens, you would have uh, refraction. Um, and in negative um, index material, you would have negative refraction. So, you know, that's uh, what else? You have uh, negative Cherenkov radiation, um, which is the radiation from nuclear uh, reactors. It grows, uh, glows blue. Um, so, I wasn't able to show you the code, which is quite interesting. Um, so I've mentioned uh, it's got lots of uh, applications. Um, so you can design thermal cloaks where you're cloaking uh, something from heat, basically. Um, uh, sort of, you can have mechanical cloaks, so you have negative compressibility. Um, so it's basically sort of covering lots of... Uh, aspects really um, so I've mentioned satellite communications um, you know you can transform flat uh, dishes to uh, no parabolic dishes to flat dishes you can also do that with lenses so you can transform uh, curved lenses to uh, flat lenses saving like space um, and cost for uh, optical engineers um, so you can uh, do some fun sort of uh, Fourier optics and, and calculate the uh, reduction in uh, the wavefront in uh, sort of transformation optics lenses uh, and I think that's that's it do you, are there any questions? Uh, well, it mostly works on microwaves, so a lot of experiments are done sort of at eight gigs. Um, when you're getting sort of optical frequencies, it's more difficult, and people tend to use silver. Uh, Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, that's why the sort of methodology has moved away from metamaterials, which have negative refraction, 
uh, to transformation optics where you're kind of having an anisotropic uh, material. So uh, you could do uh, a similar lens, but uh, it would be anisotropic. Um, you can use silver. I mean, it's, it's quite lossy. Uh, like I say, I mean, it's easier to uh, replace them with transformation optics media, which is kind of like anisotropic. Uh, so, and you could do that with something like, there's a foam called barium titanate foam. So you sort of, it's a foam, and then, you know, you, you, you have a distribution of particles in the foam, which gives it the variation of permittivity. Well, it's generally blocks. I mean, you, you, dis you discretize uh, the map, uh, and you, so you've got blocks of single permittivity uh, materials. Uh, yeah, I mean, as long as it's smaller than the wavelength. Do we have any other questions? Uh, so, so basically it's made from, it's, it's a resonant phenomenon, so uh, basically you've got uh, the permittivity and permeability, uh, which combined gives you the negative refraction. Uh, so by using a split ring resonator, uh, you, at the resonance frequency, you get um, a narrow band region where uh, you know, you've got negative permittivity. Uh, so, yeah, so I mean, that's... It's Is there another question, or shall we just wrap up at this point? Very well.